Hello, we are learning Masech the Shabbos, page 134, and the it's the 19th chapter, and the name of the chapter is, is Rabbi Lezer de Mila. The Mishnah then stated, Lo Yishochak Merev Shabbos. Lo Yishochak Merev Shabbos. We ended off yesterday, we revealed some of the uh, secrets of the doctors. Right. Rava in Mechoyza, Rava once taught this medical secret publicly in the town of Mechoyza. What is it? That a salve compressed for all pains is made of seven parts. Seven parts of fat and one of wax. That was the, the secret, right. right? Okay, so they got upset at them, the doctors, because... Uh, the business secret. The business secret. So I'm I've left you one secret. What is the secret? <laughs> now he's saying it, he's, even though I left us. So the secret was, one who washes his face and does not dry it well, boils will break out on, on his face. So what's the remedy? Let him wash well in water. Which beats have been cooked. Which beats and have been cooked. Lo Yishochak Meru Shabbos, one did not crush the cumin. We said the cumin was a, a remedy to stop the, the bleeding, right? Yeah. Or to heal the wound of the bridge. So he may chew it with his teeth and apply it. Yeah, some people would like it. If one did not vigorously mix wine and oil on the Shabbos Eve, each of these ingredients should be placed in the bowl by itself. Can you imagine with all that was going on now that wouldn't go over. Okay. And so Tanu Rabban, Dvorim Shenaris in Amilu B'Shabbos, things that we may not do for a circumcision on the Shabbos, Oisin Labi Yom Tov, but we may do it on a festival. So you can't do it on Shabbos, you might do it on Yom Tov. Okay. Shorin Lakamun, we may crush cumin for it. And we may vigorously mix wine and oil for it. For what reason is the law of cumin different on a festival day? The Chazi Lekdera. Good morning, Rebbe Boruch. Hey, Boruch. So, Maishnah Kamoin Biyom Tov, for what uh, reason? Is the law of cumin different on Yom Tov? Why are you allowed to crush cumin on Yom Tov for the sake of healing the circumcision? The Chazalek Teira, because cumin is fit for a pot. By the same token, wine and oil are fit also on Shabbos for a sick person. The Tanya and Tov in Yom Vishem and Lechel Shabbos. You may not vigorously mix wine and oil for a sick person on the Shabbos. Some of Bishem and Lozum show Bimeir. Bishem and Lozum said in the name of Abimeir, after Vinyan Bishem, we may also vigorously mix wine and oil for a sick person. I'm Bishem and Lozum, Pamach Aschash of Meir and Meir. Once Abimeir was experiencing intestinal pain. The Kashnut of Yan Bishem, and we wanted to mix vigorously oil and wine. As medication for him, and did not allow us. We said to him, Shall your words be nullified in your lifetime? You yourself said that it's okay. A sick person, Rabbi Meir, qualified for his own leniency. You were qualified for your own leniency. Even though it, I say that it's okay. And my colleagues say, it's okay. And you would expect that I would adhere to my own opinion. But throughout all my days, I've never presumed to transgress the words of my colleagues. We knew the Mahmoud Rabbi Meir was strict on himself. 
However, for everyone else, he permits it. Oh, so no by licho. The mixture of oil and wine does not require a vigorous beating and through and thorough blending. Oh, by licho, but here in our Mishnah, the mixture does require vigorous beating and thorough blending for it to be optimally effective. And that's so we may also forbid. But here also, in the case of Mila, let us prepare a mixture of oil and wine and not vigorously beat it. I know the Ketoni, this uh, moderate uh, level of blending is precisely what our Mishnah prescribed when it stated, One may place each of these ingredients into the bowl by itself. The Gemara digresses to present other laws of Yom Tov discussed by a and of Yisif. Tanu Rabon and Misani Sachad Musanishal, we may not strain mustard seed through its own strainer on Yom Tov and Matkin Oisav Gacheles, no may we, may we sweeten it with a burning coal. What's what different from this that we learned in a mission on nesting base of Mesanesha We may put a, a raw egg into a mustard strainer and strain it in order to improve the mustard appearance. Since the act is permitted on Shabbos, why is straining mustard through its own strainer forbidden on Yom Tov? When preparing and cooking food is permitted, if you do it for for mustard, it looks like you are boiler, you are sorting out, you are doing the malacha of barera, sorting. But if you do it for egg, it doesn't look like boiler. So therefore, they permitted with the egg. No, may we sweeten it with a burning coal. Tanya, matkin esvegacheles, we may sweeten mustard seed with a burning coal. There is a distinction between a glowing metal coal and or glowing wooden coal. For what reason is this stringent ruling different from the case of roasting meat on burning coals, which is permitted on Yom Tov? Though the dripping juices of the meat will inevitably extinguish the wooden coals, putting out fire. Yeah. There it is impossible to roast the meat on Yom Tov, on Yom Tov Eve, and have it to be, and have it be as tasty as when it is roasted on Yom Tov itself. Hence, roasting on Yom Tov is permitted. It's going to taste better if you roast it on. Fresh. Yeah. Here, however, it is possible to sweeten the mustard on Yom Tov, on Yom Tov Eve, and not to suffer any deterioration in taste on Yom Tov itself. Hence, sweetening, which involves extinguishing, is not permitted in Yom Tov. So, in other words, anything that you can prepare before Yom Tov and it will not affect the uh, the taste, therefore you should do it before Yom Tov. But if you can affect the taste, then you should you should not do it on Yom Tov. Meaning, if if you uh, if you, if you will make the food on Yom Tov itself, it will taste better than you're allowed to make it on Yom Tov itself. Yeah. What is the law to make cheese on Yom Tov? Gibun is the malacha of making cheese. Uh, what they call it here. Omar le osu. Of Yosef said you're not allowed to make cheese on Yom Tov. Maish no malicious. He said, why, what's the, why am I allowed to knead dough for baking bread? 
permitted in Yom Tov, and making cheese, I'm not allowed to. It's similar to kneading. Yeah. He says again, make cheese, it's possible to before Yom Tov. It's not going to affect the taste if you do it on Yom Tov or before Yom Tov. But with bread, fresh bread, tastes fresh better. bread will taste better. Ram Rinaldo Gavina Basio Mario said that they said that fresh, freshly made cheese is excellent. And freshly made cheese is, is of exceptional quality. Why is cheese, why is cheese making not permitted in Yom Tov? It's true that, the, that even freshly made cheese is excellent. But cheese made yesterday is better still. It's still very good. It's nothing... Uh, now, even fresh... Wait a minute, it's true. Cheese made yesterday is better even still. Hence, <laughs> because cheese yeah, made in Yom Tov Eve yeah, is yeah. actually superior. Cheese making is prohibited in Yom Tov Eve. They say that it's one day old is better than, yeah, than and fresh. You know, aged cheese. Like aged cheese. Age, but it's, it's much longer than yeah, one day. I know, like ch- cheddar cheese or something. Yeah, that's old. The kosher cheddar cheese is old. And as we may not, in the first place, fashion a short shirt like shirt like bandage for the member right. for the breast but one may wrap a piece of cloth around it I'm about Ali aim Abai said mother told me I haluk dinu kolafanya le sitro le lai the hem the haluk the hem of this infant's shirt like bandage should be turned upward why Lest a thread from it from it stick to the wound. And then when the bandage is removed, the infant becomes genitally mutilated. Mutilated. Yeah, that's the He can be damaged by it. That's the point. Right. Uh, so, but Abaya's mother would herself make for those infants with circumcision. She arranged a lining for half of the bandage. It says Abaya is not quoting his surrogate mother, his nurse. Hence, uh, one might think that uh, that Gemara actually refers to Abai's real mother. Rashi Dov teaches that this too is a reference to Abai's surrogate mother. He was an orphan. Oh, says I nuka the lesli choluk. For this infant that, who does not have a shirt like bandage, Laiti Veliso the Isli Shifs bring a rag that has a, a hem, Velichai Lishisol Satai, and tie the hem around at the bottom and double over the top and upward. Vaflale Lai and double over the top and upward. Rambai Mali aim and Abai said further, Mother told me this infant whose anus is not discernible. That's a problem. Rub him with oil and send him against the sun. And where the skin appears transparent, tear it crosswise with the head of a barley grain, which is sharp. However, do not tear it with a metal instrument, because that causes inflammation. Regarding this infant who cannot suckle, he is unable to nurse from his mother. It is because his mouth is cold. What's the remedy if a baby doesn't uh, nurse? Light to Kosugumri, bring a cup of burning coals. 
and stand it near the infant's mouth, the Chaim Puma, so his, his mouth will become warm, Umayit, and then he will suckle, then he will be able to nurse. Vamar Abaye Omuli Aim. Abaye continues, also said, Mother told me, Ayinuka Delem Nashte, this infant who does not breathe, Lin Pefei Benaf Voto, fan him with a fan, Umen Shate, and he will be, and he will breathe. Vamar Abaye Omuli Aim, Ayinuka Delem Ave, for this infant who does not breathe easily, Lie to Siliosu Deime, bring his mother's afterbirth, the placenta. Yeah. And slide it over his flesh, umave, and he will breathe easily. This infant who is initiated, very skinny. Lie to Lislosu the Ime, bring his mother's afterbirth with Sharki Eloi Mikutnalum and slide it over his flesh from its narrow end to its wide hand, wide end. Vee Olim, and if the infant is bloated, Umalakutna slide the afterbirth over him for its wide end to its narrow end. Om Bayam Wali Aim, another. Remedy that was told to Abaye Ayanuka the Sumak regarding this infant who is red. The Akti Lo Ibla Beidom is because his blood is still not absorbed into his flesh. Israhu Layad Ibla Beidomo, therefore wait for him until his blood is absorbed into his flesh. Veli Mahalua and then circumcise him. The Yorok Vakti Loi. The yolk reactively enough of bedama in the case of an infant who is yellow, jaundice, and the reason is that he is um, that he is still blood deficient. Listen, what enough of bedama? Wait until he is full blooded, velim halua, and then circumcise him. Yeah. So over here it's interesting. It says that babies that have jaundice, it means that they then that still deficient of blood. Yeah. So you can't do the circumcision by by doing so, taking more blood from them. So, so that's why you have to wait. Yeah. Well, this is a Tanoic support for this last piece of advice. Tanya once once traveled to visit the sea towns. Vosisha and woman came before me. Shemalo no Rishon Mamesh, who had circumcised the first son and he died, Shani Mamesh, and the second son and he died, Shlishi Rosalafon, and the, the third son she brought before me, before Binosan. Raisi Shuadam, so I saw the baby was red. Amatilam Tinya Shribola Dom, I told the woman I'm not circumcising him until. His blood is absorbed into his flesh. It shouldn't be so red. So she waited for him until his blood was absorbed into his flesh. She circumcised him and he lived. Survived. And they gave him a name. They called him the same as Abinosan. And they called the child not on the Babylonian after me. Rabbi Nosson continues his discourse, Another occasion I traveled to the province of Kapoitkio, and a woman came before me, Shemola Beno Rishon Remes, who had circumcised the first son and he died. Sheni Remes, second, second son, and he died also. Shlishi Vatalefona Yishu Yorik. I brought the third one before me, and I saw that he was green, or yellow. I saw that he was yellow. Yorick in Hebrew is green, but over here translated yellow. He had jaundice. He tasted with oisi by dumberries. And I, did, I looked closely at him, and I did not see in him any conventional blood. Covenantal blood. Yeah. Covenantal. Yeah. What is covenantal blood? It no says blood. there was no blood in the member, no blood whose 
flow. whose flow would be caused by circumcision. So there was no so covenantal blood. Oh, it's like covenant, the blood of the covenant. So it's uh, covenantal. Uh, covenantal. Got, you, got it? Yeah. So anyhow, what did he tell her to do? To wait. Amatila Amtini. Amtini loy achi Wait for him until he is full blooded. Vimtina loy. And again she waited. Vumalo Isa Vikoyo. She circumcised him and he lived. And then there was another baby with the name Nosa. Nosana Babli Koshmoy Nosana Babli al Shmi. They called him after me. Now we're going to page one thirty four B one. Yeah. No Mishnah. I think we have another 20 pages and we finish, uh, yeah. we'll, be, we'll do see him on Shabbos. Yeah. Right, Kuf Nun Zayn is the last, uh, Kuf Nun Zayn, so 150, 157, so 150, 157, we are 134. We have petitions. In, in Mishnahic times, it was customary to bathe the infant in hot water twice. Once prior to circumcision to enable him to withstand the ordeal, I guess to soften the area, and once again afterward as a therapeutic measure. Failure to perform either of these washings possibly endangered the infant's life. The washing before and after with hot water. Hence, the rabbis permitted otherwise forbidden hot water bathing on Shabbos when circumcision is performed on that day. In addition, some consider the infant critically ill on the third day following the Mila, thus allow him to be bathed in hot water then as well, even though it is Shabbos. So the Mishnah will discuss these teachings, these bathings. We may bathe the infant in hot water. Now, when we say hot water, it means you have to heat the water and you have to heat, to heat them on Shabbos. Heating the water is preliminary to the mitzvah of Mila. According to Rabbi Lezer, it may be performed even on Shabbos. According to Rabbi Akiva, it may not. Shem discussed at length the permissibility of heating water on Shabbos for a circumcision through the agency of a non-Jew. According to Rabbi Akiva, the Rishonim here also discussed the permissibility of heating water. Even according to Rabbi Akiva, for the post mila bathing, Possible danger to the infant's life already exists. And we bathe the, we may bathe the, the infant in hot water, Ben Lif both before and after. And we may sprinkle hot water upon him by hand, but not with utensils. We may bathe the infant on the third day following the circumcision when it falls on Shabbos. Speaks about the people of Shechem when they they were asked to circumcise on the third day they they were in pain. So we see the third day is even there's a little bit more danger than the first and second. So therefore, according to Rabbi Rabbi Lozo Ben Azari, you're allowed to bathe the child with hot water. So for Gandal Ginus, questionable one, or Androgyne. A questionable one it says number nine baby possibly born during the eighth month of pregnancy. The ordinary incubation period for a fetus is nine months. Some fetuses mature earlier and are born during the seven month. However, sage determined that a child born after being formed in eight months cannot leave. Let's see. So it says, uh, when it comes to androgynous, and when it comes to Shabbos, 
לפי איזה סופק, רבי יהודה אמרתי, רבי יהודה says you're allowed to. So let's see the Gemara. We don't want to show more chitzim, but you said, you stated in the beginning of the first part of the mission that we may bathe the infant in hot water, even in the normal manner. And then you stated that we may only sprinkle the water upon him by hand. What indeed do you mean to say? Rabbi Yehuda v'Rav Rabbu Adam Tavai Keitzatani. The second statement is teaching how the bathing mentioned in the first statement is to be performed. Machid since a cotton. The town of first tell, tells us that we may bathe the infant. Before the circumcision and after the circumcision. But not in the normal fashion. How then shall we bathe the baby? Tana explains. 134, B2. We may sprinkle hot water upon him by hand. But not with the utensil. But the Tana Kama states that we may bathe, which implies that we may bathe the infant normally. If he meant sprinkling, he should have said so. We may bathe the baby before or after this. And the first day in a normal way. And on the third day when it falls on Shabbos, we may sprinkle hot water upon him by hand, but not with the utensil. says we may bathe the infant in a normal manner, even on the third day when it falls on Shabbos. Stated that it come to pass on the third day when they were in pain. You do it before Mila or after Mila. First day in the normal way. On the third day when it falls on Shabbos, we may sprinkle hot water upon him by hand. You may bathe the infant on the third day when it falls on Shabbos. So there's no proof for the matter. There's allusion to the matter. It came to pass on the third day when they were in pain. When they sprinkle, they may sprinkle with neither a cup, nor a plate, nor a vessel. But they must do so by hand. So we have come back to the opinion of the Tanakam. What is meant by the statement, even though there is no proof for the matter and allusion to the matter? The Pasuk expressly states that one third, on the third day following circumcision, the men of Shechem experienced great pain and were presumably in physical danger. This is not an absolute proof because, in the case of an adult, Wounded flesh does not heal, does not heal quickly. Cotton solid may be so high. Whereas in the case of a child, the wounded flesh does heal quickly. Oh, there was, also the Rava. There was a, once a certain person who came before Rava to inquire whether he was permitted to bathe an infant normally on the day of circumcision, which was the Shabbos. Irlekishmati Rava instructed the man according to his own teaching, answering in the affirmative. Il Hashrava Rava became weak and ill and began to worry that his illness was a punishment for ruling as he did. Right, uh, according to Rava, Rava, it says, Rava's basis of both the Tan Kama and Rabbelezer and Zara maintain that normal bathing is permitted on the first two days following the Mila. So Rava instructed him, answering, answering in the affirmative, Il Rava, but then he became weak. He thought maybe, began to worry that his illness was a punishment for ruling as he did. Why, do I, why did I have to take issue with the interpretation of the elders? Rabbi Yehuda 
אין רבא ברבוע. אמרו לרבון לרבא, דרבי סט רבא, תן לכל פסי דמר, but it was taught in the Weiss accordance with masters, meaning with Rabba's interpretation. Why does he now have doubts? The Mishnah itself is more precise according to their interpretation. From that which the Mishnah said, that we may bathe the infant on the third day, it falls on Shabbos. Now, if it will be, it is well if you say that the Tana stated that we must sprinkle even on the first day, and never men- and he never mentioned normal bathing at all. And the Kamal Rabbi Loz ben Azar Marchitzin. This is why Rabbi Loz ben Azar came and said to him, in utter disagreement, we may actually bathe the infant. But if you say that the Tana Kama also stated we may bathe the infant on the first day and the second, and he stated that we sprinkle only on the third day. Then this phrase of the Mishnah of Azar says we may bathe the infant on the third day is imprecisely worded. He should have stated we may also bathe on the third day and as much as Rabbi Lezor is merely extending the unanimous ruling of the first two days to the third day. He's extending it. Not only two days, he actually said three days. He came from Eretzisol to Babylonia. He said the halacha follows Rabbi Lezor ben Azariah that you may extend the second day to the third day, you can wash the baby even on the third day. Not just sprinkle, actually wash him. So they asked him, they pondered this opinion in the west of Etsy soil, if, if bathing of the infant in Tar's body or only bathing the circumcision wound, it is logical that bathing of the infant's entire body was permitted. For if it enters your mind that Rabbi Loz ben Azar sanctioned only bathing of the circumcision wound, is that, is that case worse than applying hot water upon an ordinary wound on the Shabbos, which is permitted? Rav said, We we do not prevent hot water and oil from being applied upon an ordinary upon an ordinary wound on the Shabbos. We do not prevent hot water and oil from being applied upon an ordinary wound on the Shabbos. Matkiv Rav Yitzchak, Veloi Shani Loch Ben Chamin Shulcham B'Shabbos Chamin Shulcham B'Rav Shabbos. Do you not differentiate between hot water that was heated on the Shabbos itself and hot water that was heated on Shabbos Eve before Shabbos? Masculine of Dimi. My From what proof do you say that here in the mission of the rabbis of Elizabeth and Zion argue in the case of hot water that was heated on Shabbos? Maybe they're arguing about hot water that were heated before Shabbos. I wanted to answer of Dimi's objection, as Rav Yosef subsequently did. Rav Yosef anticipated me, and he answered it. Why? Because to withhold hot water is a danger for the infant. Eight more Namit was said also, Kyoso Rabino Bibam of Lozo Amarabia Bau Amarbirchon, Aloha Karabulaz Ben Azar, the law accords with the pin of Loz Ben Azario, Ben Bahamshuram Shabbos, the Hamshuram Shabbos, Shabbos, whether it was heated, the hot water was heated before Shabbos, or, after, or inch on Shabbos, Benachos Kugufo, Benachos Miller, whether you want to wash the entire body or just the circum- circumcised area. Because to withhold hot water from the entire body is a danger for him. We do not prevent hot water and oil 
or being applied upon an ordinary wound on the Shabbat. Shmuel said one should place the hot water and oil outside the wound, 134b4. And they flow gently down to the wound. So not doing it directly on the wound. We may not put oil and hot water onto a soft cloth to place upon a wound on the Shabbos. Also, over, over there there's a concern about schita, about squeezing. Maybe it's going to be uh, if, you, if you apply the oil and the wine or if you apply the oil on the cloth and you might come to squeeze we may not put hot water and oil onto a soft cloth that is resting upon a wound on the Shabbos also there also the prohibition is on account of squeezing not grinding. Hence, the Bible does not invalidate Shmuel's opinion, which is a safeguard against grinding. Tanakhov said the Shmuel, it was explicitly taught in a Bible in accordance with the opinion of Shmuel. And as in Cham V'Shem and Gamak V'Shabbos, we now place hot water and oil upon a wound on the Shabbos. But we may place them outside the wound. And the flow gently down to the wound. We may place upon the wound a dry cloth or a dry sponge, but not a dry reed and not dry cloth rags. In the rule of cloth rags, in the first part of the vice is contradictory to the rule of cloth rags, in the second part. Leikash, avichad teva tiki. Second ruling deals with new rags, which have a healing effect. As a safeguard, the Tana prohibits their use. Avatiki, this first ruling, the other hand, deals with old rags, which do not have a healing effect. Hence, there is no need to prohibit their use. masu. Derived from the Baisa, these new cloth rags cause healing. Sofik van der Ginus, another part of the Mishnah, is in the case of a questionable one or an androgyne. We may not desecrate the Shabbos on his behalf. Tabuda permits it in the case of an androgyne. Tanu Rabban Olosa, it says, His foreskin shall be circumcised. Olosa, the foreskin of one who is certain, Vada overrides the Shabbos restriction. The circumcising one who is questionable does not override the Shabbos. We'll continue, God willing, tomorrow.